Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. such a wonderful setup for answering the door. I can't understand it. Mary may have stepped out, and we know the nurse isn't. Who is it? It's Jerry North, Gordon. I've got Pam with me. One moment, please. Come on in. Come on upstairs, the both of you. I don't care how many times we come here, I still think this place is spooky. Shh. It's ingenious. Ever since the man had that automobile accident, he's been a helpless invalid, and yet he's... A spooky. Come in. Pam and Jerry, how are you? Just fine, Fine, Gordon. Gordon. The point is, how are you? Uh... About the same as usual. Uh, were you ringing long? I must have dozed off. No, but I, I'm sorry if we disturbed you. It, where's Marion? Uh, shopping, I guess. Oh, pull up some chairs. Sit down. Sit Thanks. Down. So, Pam, you're going to be my babysitter for a few days, huh? Well, until your regular nurse gets back. Still think it's an imposition. Nonsense. Uh, Jerry tagged along to talk to you about a, a project he has in mind, Gordon. Really? What is it, Jerry? Well, I... No, just a minute. Marion. Oh. Marion. Yes? The Norths are up here. I'm coming up. Uh, you were saying, Jerry? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Partially, at any rate. Well, my intercom set? Your entire system of living. Hello, Pam. Jerry. Sorry I'm late. Hello, Hello Marion. Everything all right, darling? Well, I don't know. I think Jerry's trying to sell me something. On the contrary, I want to buy something from you. But what? Your life. My life. <laughs> you can have it for a counterfeit quarter with the result. No, you don't understand. I think your life, or... Well, that is the story of your life. During the past year and a half is... Well, it's worth far more than a counterfeit quarter. Uh, Jerry thinks it would make a fine magazine article, possibly even a small book. I know a writer who could do a terrific job on it. The struggle that Gordon put up before he regained the use of his right arm again would, would make one chapter by itself. Of course it would. And someday you're going to get out of this bed and walk again. Oh, I doubt it. Doctor doesn't seem to think so. Well, I've got to be getting on over to my office, Gordon. But you think it over. We'll talk about it again. All right, Jerry. I'm overdue at the agency uh, now. Just a minute, Mary. I'll see you to the door, Jerry. I'll see you. Well, what is it? I'm in a hurry. Why? Heavy date with Barry Weston? Certainly couldn't be work. You're disgusting. Yes. Like a corpse that persists in remaining above ground. <laughs> I know how well you'd like to be rid of me. Shall I tell you something amusing? <laughs> you almost got your wish this morning. What are you talking about? 
I was in a mood. Black, depressing mood. I almost... I was thinking of committing suicide. Do you know what stopped me? I thought of you, beloved. And I realized that no matter what arrangements I might make in my will, the courts would still uphold your widow's rights. You'd get a big slice of my estate. And that, alive or dead, I just couldn't bear. You maniac! If you think that... That's allowed, darling. Remember, we have company. And we're here at the agency field at the uh, format suggested for your television show by Mr. Lane, personally. Is, uh... Come in. I was wondering if you'd have a moment to look at these before you left, Mrs. Lane. All right. That'll be all, Ellen. I'll finish that tomorrow. Got to be careful. Someone might walk in. Oh, let them. I've gotten to a point where I'm past caring by now. I'm a big boy now. And I like this setup even less than you do. Why won't you let me talk to Gordon? No. You've got to be patient. We've got to wait. Wait? But how long? Marion, I don't want to be cruel, but let's face the facts. Your marriage to Gordon was washed up long before his accident. What's the matter, honey? Don't you like the way things are now? Well, a good part of the time I feel like a heel. And Marion, I don't like that feeling. How do you feel now? I'm still alive. <laughs> you mustn't be so eager, Marion. I'll go prepare dinner. It's about time. You're late. Yes. I had to put in a little overtime. Of course. How is Barry these days? Good? Never better. Why? Morbid curiosity, I guess. Tell me, Marion, how does he square this, uh, this activity with his otherwise noble nature? He suffers. Type of thing you couldn't understand. Any more questions? No, I don't think so. The senator called for a full investigation. Quote, let the chips fall where they may, unquote. Well, here's a story about the new Paris fashion. Shall I read that to you? Oh, no, no thanks, ma'am. Uh, oh, can I get you some more? Uh, would you mind? Marion keeps quarts of the stuff in the refrigerator. Fruit juice coming up. Uh, Pam. Yes? Isn't one of the pistols missing from that wall? I can't see too well from over here. Well, I wouldn't know. Are there supposed to be two? Yes. That's odd. I'll ask Marion about it. She may have taken it down for some reason. Barry Weston, please. Hello, Barry. Gordon Lane. Oh, as usual. And how are you? Ah, good. Uh, uh, Barry, are you, uh, are you free this evening? I made no plans. Why? Let me see. All right, Gordon, I'll, I'll drive home with Marion. Goodbye. There's no reason to keep your dinner guest waiting, Pam. Especially when he's a cop. Why don't you just take off? Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. It's all right. Anyway, young lady, you're fired. Well, if I'd known this wasn't going to be a steady work. Oh, wait. Mary, you just give it. Come on up, dear. And bring Barry with you. I'm going to give you the finest of references, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've really been wonderful. Pam, 
do you know Barry Weston? He's our art director, also an old friend. Barry, this is Mrs. North. How do you do, Mrs. North? How do you do? Barry! <laughs> Come over here and say hello to the invalid. Excuse me, please. Gordon just gave me the sack. What? Uh, oh, of course. I'll phone you soon. We'll have lunch. It's a date. Goodbye, Gordon. Mr. Weston. Bye, Bye Mrs. North. And Barry's gonna stay and have dinner with us, dear. Isn't that nice? Well, if, uh, if I won't be too much trouble. Oh, nonsense. No trouble at all. Is it, Marion? No. I'll go down and get things started. May I help? Uh, then I, uh, stay here and keep me company. <laughs> too many cooks, you know. Run along, Marion. Well, you... You're looking much better, Gordon. <laughs> You're a liar. I look like a refugee from a horror picture. Oh, I mean it. Why, the last time I saw you, you... I was flat on my back, and I still am. Yeah, but enough of that. Tell me, how is the gay young bachelor doing these days? Well, I've been working pretty hard lately. I haven't had much time for playing around, you know. <laughs> you wouldn't try to kid your old boss, would you? No, no, I mean it, really. You know, Barry... You ought to find some nice girl and get married, settle down. It'd be the best thing in the world for you. I've been thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> you got to quit thinking about it or you never will get married. I'll tell you what. You get yourself a wife, and I'll give you a nice, big, fat increase in salary as a wedding present. How's that? Well, that's very kind of you, Gordon. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to do it. <laughs> Mm. Oh, Barry, have you got a cigarette? No. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. You're the athletic type, aren't you? Can I, uh, can I get you some? Uh, would you mind? A ask Marion. She knows where they are. I'll be right back. Oh, take your time, Barry. some cigarettes. Just a minute. Yes? What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Oh, yes, there is. What's he been saying to you? Come on, let's have it. He's up to something. I knew it when he telephoned you. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't I? Listen, he's a spoiler. He ruins everything he touches. He's going to ruin us. But you're dramatizing this a little? What could he possibly do to us? I don't know. But I'm sure he's got it all figured out. And it won't be good. Lying there in bed, plotting, scheming. We've got to do something about it. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Well, I can't believe that you feel... You want me, don't you? Prove it. Hey, what's keeping you? What is it? Send Barry up. I want my cigarettes. He's on his way. Don't look at me like that. I don't think I've ever really looked at you before. Get out of here. Go on. Run his errands. Crawl away. If you tell him... Oh, doesn't that look wonderful? Mm -hmm. I wish car fix slices for hungry policemen and starving publishers. <laughs> what about famished wives? No, oh, I keep them hungry. It's good for their figures. What's the matter with my figure? <laughs> North residence, Cinderella speaking. Uh, yes, he's here. It's for you, Bill. They didn't sound very playful. Thank you. Wagon speaking. When? Oh, I see. Uh, what was that address again? Uh huh. One, four, three, no. Apartment. 
12J. Right. I'm on my way. You can have my share, Pam. Duty calls. What did you say that address was? 143 Donald Street, apartment 12J. Say, that's right in your neighborhood. A homicide? Well, they wouldn't call me about a traffic violation. Why? Well, who was the... I mean, what was the name of... The... Of the corpse? A fellow by the name of uh, Weston. Barry Weston? Yes, Barry Weston. Yes, I... I knew one of the guns was missing, Lieutenant. Pam North didn't take it. Obviously, I couldn't have. I see. That leaves your wife. Have you any idea of her motive? I... I can't say. Oh, come on, Mr. Lane. That gun was used to murder a man. His body's still lying at the foot of those stairs. Please, Lieutenant. I love Marion. I still love her. You called the police and said your life was in danger. What did you mean by that? I was excited and frightened. Why? Well, I, I heard the shots. And you thought you were going to be next, huh? Yes. Barry had just left here. He, he'd going to get some... something for me. He never came back. She must have been outside, listening. Listening to what? He was trying to warn me. I wouldn't believe him. He said she was going to kill me. He said that she'd ask him to help her. We argued. I called him a liar. Poor Barry. It's my fault. It's all my fault. Now, take it easy, Mr. Lane. You're going to be all right. Lieutenant Wigan, let me speak to uh, Acton. Oh, Ralph? Bill, did you get a report on those prints? Yeah, the ones on the gun. I see. Okay, thanks. You better give me a blow-up of them. Right. I'm taking you in for further questioning, Mrs. Lane. Why? I told you how it must have happened. Gordon killed him. How, Mrs. Lane? You also told me that your husband is unable to get out of bed. And the doctor verified this. I don't know how he did it. I, I just know that somehow, some way, he killed him. According to our fingerprint experts, your prints were on that gun. Can you explain that? Well, I must have picked it up. I, I heard the shots, and I rushed in here from the kitchen. When I saw Barry lying there, I don't remember what I did. You better come along with me, Mrs. Lane. Call the morgue, boys. Uh, Bill, you can't leave Mr. Lane here alone. Yeah. Of course, I can make arrangements for a department nurse. Well, his regular nurse will be back from out of town this evening. Uh, Jerry can go pick her up while I stand by. Well, that's very nice of you, Pam, but well, I... Well, I don't mind. Uh, Miss Halsey's coming in on the 11.30 from Pittsburgh. Yes, that's right, the 11.30. Go ahead, Bill. It'll be okay. Would you uh, like me to phone your lawyer for you? Uh, we'll both be down as soon as Miss Halsey gets here, Marion. Come along, Mrs. Lane. I came back because I thought you might want to see this. There was a newsboy downstairs Thanks, and I... Thanks, darling, but you better hurry if you're going to meet that train. Oh, I'll make it. You know, I'm not too crazy about the idea of leaving you here alone. Oh, don't be silly. Just go on and pick up the nurse and get back here as soon as you can. Okay. Pam! Are you down there? Pam? Yes, Gordon, what is it? What's happening? What's going on? Did, did someone just come in? Uh, just a minute, Gordon. I'm coming up. Where's Jerry? Jerry just left to pick up Miss Halsey. There's no one here. <laughs> he brought me this, uh, 
There's a story in it about the murder. Well, what, what does it say? Oh, I just glanced at it. It's nothing, really. Uh, read it to me, Pam, please. Uh, Gordon, it, it's just a collection of, of wild guesses. It, it was obviously dashed off in a hurry by a, a reporter who wanted to cook up a juicy... Oh, my goodness. Oh, what is it? I just remembered I left a pot of coffee perking in the kitchen. I'll be right back. like strong coffee. Jerry always says that... Uh, he says you might as well drink hot waters. Excuse me, there, there's something I have to do. And he did all that without getting out of bed? Oh, I don't know. Please let me alone. I thought I told you to hold all calls. Uh, now, Mrs. North. Uh, she says it's urgent? All right, put her on. Bill? Oh, thank heavens. Bill, he can walk. He, he doesn't know I know it, but, but I know it because I know the newspaper couldn't have... Bill, uh, no, wait a minute. The, the newspaper was... What? Well, now, just a minute, Pam. Pam, will you wait a minute? Does your husband have an extension phone in his room? Yes, he does. Pam, look, I I'm busy right now. No, I can't be bothered. B Bill, wait, I I'm trying to tell you. G Gordon can walk. B Bill, uh, no, wait a minute. The, the newspaper was... Bill, are you there? You'll never make it. Gordon, don't. Why not, Pam? If I kill you, my alibi's still good. And Pam, I had to hang up on you because I knew he'd be listening in. I got a radio prowl car here as fast as I could. Sure, Bill. It's all right now. I, I feel... Excuse me. Hi. What? What happened? Well, I tried to phone you a while back, but there was no answer. Who hit you? Miss Halsey. Uh, that is, I, I thought it was Miss Halsey. She's Gordon Lane's nurse. Only this woman turned out to be a lady riveter from Altoona, and she thought I was a masher. Oh, I think her handbag must have been full of samples of her work. <laughs> but how? Why did... Well, don't you see? I, I have no idea what Miss Halsey looks like, and that's why I was trying to phone you. Oh, what a mess. I hope you haven't been having any trouble around here. No, darling. Not when I compare it with what you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Lou Landers. Produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation. such a wonderful setup for answering the door. I can't understand it. Mary may have stepped out, and we know the nurse isn't there. Who is it? It's Jerry North, Gordon. I've got Pam with me. One moment, please. Come on in. Come on upstairs, the both of you. I don't care how many times we come here, I still think this place is spooky. Shh. Isn't spooky. It's ingenious. Ever since the man had that automobile accident, he's been a helpless invalid, and yet he's it's spooky. Come in. Pam and Jerry, how are you? Just fine. Fine, Gordon. Gordon. The point is, how are you? Uh, about the same as usual. Uh, were you ringing long? I must have dozed off. No, but I, I'm sorry if we disturbed you. It, where's Marion? Uh, shopping, I guess. Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. <laughs> <laughs>